Welcome to the socials of 94.3 Radio 1 and yet another episode of our series which we like to call Binge Watch. Here I decipher, unravel and fanboy over TV show or movie series that you can either binge watch or can binge watch. So let's go. Okay, so if you've read the title right, we are of course talking about uh, the Deadpool movies, uh, one of my personal favorites. I think uh, its presentation, its treatment was really genre redefining, very disruptive and it sort of redefined the superhero movies uh, with its uh, very unique R-rated presentation. Uh, the first part came in 2016 and the second came in 2018, but the journey and the making of the Deadpool movies is no shorter than a movie itself. Uh, Ryan Reynolds was attached uh, to Deadpool uh, for a very long time and really vouched for its uh, success and its making. Uh, you know, he played Deadpool in a different a sort of a variant of Deadpool in X-Men Origins uh, Wolverine in the year 2009 and uh, luck has it at that in the third part of Deadpool, we have Deadpool and Wolverine. Of course, it's not the same Wolverine and it's not the same Deadpool, but uh, Deadpool is going to be making his official entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and it's going to be the first R-rated movie, which is something that I'm super pumped about. So we're going to unravel and talk about the Deadpool movies and that's what's the topic of discussion today. So let's go. So the development of a Deadpool movie starring Ryan Reynolds began in February 2004 before he played the character in X-Men Origins Wolverine in 2009. Uh, Reese and Wernick were hired for a spin-off in 2010 and worked with Ryan Reynolds to adapt the character more faithfully, including his fourth wall breaking, after the portrayal in Wolverine was criticized. Miller was, uh, which is Tim Miller, was hired in 2011. An enthusiastic response to the leaked test footage he created with Reynolds led to a green light from Fox in the year 2014. Additional casting began in early 2015 and principal photography took place in Vancouver, British Columbia from March to May of that year. Several vendors provided visual effects for the film, uh, if, ranging from the addition of blood and gore to the creation of the CGI character Colossus. Okay, so that was how the first part of Deadpool was made. Uh, you know, there was a lot that went behind. Uh, of course, I mentioned the test footage that was leaked. And Ryan Reynolds has come on record and say that he doesn't know. Uh, but of course, Ryan, we know that you leaked it. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, the plot of Deadpool 1. Wade Wilson, uh, who's a former Special Forces operative who now works as a mercenary. His world comes crashing down when evil scientist Ajax uh, tortures, disfigures and transforms him into Deadpool. The rogue experiment leaves Deadpool with accelerated hearing powers and a twisted sense of humor. With the help of mutant allies, Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead, uh, Deadpool uses his new skills to hunt down the man who nearly destroyed his life. And here's the plot of Deadpool 2. Okay, so wisecracking mercenary Deadpool meets Russell, an angry teenage mutant who lives at an orphanage. When Russell becomes the target of Cable, a genetically enhanced soldier from the future, Deadpool realizes that he'll need some help saving the boy from such a superior enemy. He soon joins forces with Bedlam, Shatterstar, Domino and other powerful mutants to protect young Russell from Cable and his advanced weaponry. Okay, so here's what I really like about the movie. Firstly, the action pieces. Uh, the opening scene of Deadpool is nothing short of uh, something that you could marvel over. I think it was the footage that got leaked uh, initially and people really vouched for and which is why the movie got greenlit and it was later recreated and polished uh, for the opening scene of Deadpool 1. Secondly, I feel the fourth wall breaking is nothing short of incredible. Uh, it's so meta, it's so current, it's so topical. All the jokes that Ryan Reynolds is doing, all the quips that he has, it really is true to the comic book uh, presentation of the character and I, he really owns the role. Uh, thirdly, I love his camaraderie between uh, uh, Wade Wilson aka Deadpool and uh, Colossus. I think there's this brotherhood and uh, it's incredible how they've uh, reimagined Colossus from the X-Men movies as well. Uh, and I really love uh, the duration of the movie is really crisp, really tight, really uh, impactful in the short duration that it's uh, for and I think that's what makes for a really interesting uh, viewing experience. It's time for my favorite. My favorite is the segment I talk about uh, what is it that really resonated with me from the particular TV show or movie series. And here we're talking about Deadpool. So let's go. Okay, so my favorite characters, of course, uh, Wade Wilson, uh, aka Deadpool. Uh, secondly, I love Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Thirdly, I love Dopinder, our very own Dopinder, Indian representation. Of course, he's playing uh, Mira Juta in Japan, Firbi Dele Hindustani in the car uh, when they're going around. Uh, I love Colossus. I, like I said, I love the brotherhood and the camaraderie that they have, uh, Wade Wilson and Colossus. And it's a great reimagination of the character from the X Men movies. And I also love. 
uh, Josh Brolin's incredible portrayal as uh, Cable. Of course, he killed it uh, as Thanos, uh, but he was really uh, menacing in the Avengers movies. But here he has a sort of an anti-hero presentation, and I think. Uh, as the movies will uh, progress forward he should also join forces uh, with deadpool for larger uh, antics so these are my favorite characters from the deadpool movies so my favorite scenes uh, where do i start and where do i end i think uh, the starting of deadpool uh, the first scene like i said is such an incredible scene it really uh, hooks you into the movie and i think that's what really caught the attention of the people uh, who really wanted a deadpool movie to be presented that way which is why the movie got made so i think that starting scene of deadpool interjecting uh, the goons and you know uh, going up against them in that highway jumping from the top and you know with his quips and all those things was incredible secondly my favorite scene is uh, where uh, they uh, <laughs> where deadpool actually loses his limbs because his body is broken into half and then he has his baby feet going in and he's sitting with a uh, black black widow and uh, he is uh, <laughs> it's a funny scene i mean uh, all of us love that particular scene and my third favorite scene is actually the ending of deadpool 2 where deadpool is about to die and he's closing his eyes and everyone's really emotional and they even foreshadowed that in the beginning of the movie uh, of of deadpool 2 where he's having that fight scene and he says that i'm going to die in this movie <laughs> and he's lying down he's closes his eyes and he's saying that i'm about to die and then he closes his eyes and everybody is like oh my god deadpool's gone and he opens his eyes like no i'm not dead yet <laughs> i think it's so so brilliantly performed by Ryan Reynolds and it just goes on to show his acting prowess and his uh comedic timing so i think that was a brilliant brilliant scene i think there are some incredible scenes uh, you know there are some incredible cameos uh, within the movie as well you had brad pitt out of nowhere coming in for like a microsecond and no one expected that no one anticipated that so i think deadpool makes for great viewing there's great chemistry between him and his love interest as well and also special mention uh, to the chemistry between uh, wade wilson and vanessa i think they've got such great on screen chemistry and i'm really looking forward to seeing the both of them together in uh, deadpool and wolverine uh, and yeah i think these are my favorite moments uh, from the deadpool duology uh, which is soon going to be a trilogy so i'm really looking forward to having some more favorite moments from the third movie and look at it as a whole we've got rika with us rika i want to ask you what's that one show that's your that's your eternal favorite a show that you always go back to you have fond memories of watching what would that show be for you I think Gossip Girl. Gossip Girl. That's so like girly of me to say, but genuinely, um, okay, it's like the first show which all my friends. Um, no, you know, <laughs> sorry, it's actually when I was like fourteen. Okay. All my friends were watching Gossip Girl, okay. so I started watching Gossip Girl. Huh. But I didn't really like Gossip Girl. Right. So all of these like, oh, it's like Chuck kissed this girl and this did that, that. I'm like, I don't really care to be honest. But now that I'm older and I'm rewatching it, I'm like, oh my god, this is actually so much more fun now that I can like appreciate. Gossip Girl and like right. you know what they're going through and like okay the fashion especially because I love fashion right. I'm all about fashion yeah so when I'm seeing what Serena Vanderwoodson's wearing and like seeing all of um what is it Blair's Birkin bags and I'm just like okay yeah okay now I know the value of a Birkin so I yeah. can be like I appreciate that Birkin bag instead of just being like what is that bag it's like, <laughs> like, you know Chanel it's okay. yeah and if I were to ask you what's like two questions what's your favorite character and what's your favorite moment from Gossip Girls what would that be for you. My favorite moment is the Thanksgiving dinner. Okay. Because <laughs> it's like all Which of them. Are, yeah, it's all the, the, like the entire. All of them are there, and they're all like interlinked with each other. Like, this one's ex with this one, but this one like is sleeping with this one. But that's her stuff. <laughs> like, the parents are a thing, and this, yeah. the kids are a thing. I'm just like, oh my goodness! It's like the most like Bollywood thing ever, where they're all just like getting up and walking away, and like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so tense. And I'm just, a lot like, of drama. Yeah. A lot of drama. I love yeah. drama. Yeah. Okay. Not, not in real life. But not in real life. <laughs> and I think my favorite character, I think, might be Dan's dad because he Dan's does music. Dad. Okay. Yeah. Come on, Rufus okay. Humphrey. He does music. Right. So yeah, good for you, Rufus. Your son is interesting, but you're nice. <laughs> How cool! How cool! So guys. This is what Rika thinks about Gossip Girl. Uh, we definitely going to do a revisit of Gossip Girl on Binge Watch. Thank you so much, Rika. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Do let us know uh, if you resonated with this episode. What is your favorite character from the Deadpool movies? What's your favorite moment? Tell us what TV show or movie series would you want us to cover next in uh, Binge Watch. My name is Bharat. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you back. Subscribe to ninety four point three Radio One, and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Ninety four point three Radio One.